Did you know? The King of All Cosmos face was modeled after the singer Freddie Mercury, and his body is based on Japanese ballet dancer Tetsuya Teddy Kumakawa. The King has also been used to humorously mask glitches in the series. If the player manages to go out of bounds in any of the Katamari games, the King will warp them back onto the playfield using a technique he calls the Royal Warp. He says how embarrassing it is that he had to warp the player, mocking the developer's handiwork. Interestingly, neither the Prince nor the King were originally created for Katamari. Takahashi had previously drafted a game where the player takes control of a boy riding an invisible go-kart. Similar to Katamari, the objective was to destroy buildings by driving over them. The tiny prince was going to sit on the child's back, occasionally taking control of him by plugging a tiny steering wheel into the back of his head. Despite releasing in 2004, Katamari Damacy's gameplay didn't receive a patent until 2009. The patent describes how objects in the world attach themselves to a player-controlled object. They even detail how the player's cluster stays ball-shaped, while allowing its uneven surface to affect how it rolls. Tracking an object's weight and temperature were also included, which are both essential to game modes in We Love Katamari and Beautiful Katamari. The patent was a source of frustration for series creator Keita Takahashi, who lamented over its existence. Here we are in the 21st century, and I think we could be doing a lot more if we used our minds to move forward rather than keep dwelling on who owns what. Katamari Damacy was heavily influenced by Takahashi's artistic background. He earned a degree in sculpture from the prestigious Musashino Art University, where he was known for his surreal and humorous works. One sculpture was a goat-shaped flower pot, which would drain excess water through its udders. Takahashi was used to seeing his sculptures in full 3D, and wanted to try a medium that would flatten his models onto a 2D screen. Despite being unfamiliar with computers and not even owning a PlayStation, he joined Namco in 1999 to fulfill his desires. Uninspired by Namco's lineup of sequels in the late 90s, Takahashi took matters into his own hands and presented the company with his idea for Katamari. However, Namco hesitated due to the game's unconventional nature. To convince them, Takahashi applied to create a game with students attending the Namco Digital Hollywood Game Laboratory. The students would help by modeling the objects the player picked up, an exercise intended to expose them to the process of game production. The prototype managed to convince Namco of the game's potential, and the project was given a modest budget. Rather than emulate the feeling of driving a car or take cues from cinema, Katamari was planned as an experience unique to video games. It deliberately steered away from complicated controls, as Takahashi was enchanted by the simple joy of controlling a character on screen. Throughout development, Namco pressured the team to add features and make the game more complex. Takahashi actively ignored these instructions to preserve the game's simplicity, and even decided not to include any items or power-ups. Even having specific goals in the levels was rejected. Making the Katamari grow needed to be intrinsically fun, rather than just an objective. Early drafts even omitted the time limit, but this made the game less enjoyable, so it was only left out in a handful of levels. Initially, the left analog stick was mapped to the prince's left arm, and the right analog stick to the prince's right, and the player would push each stick alternately to move the Katamari. This ended up proving difficult to understand, so it was simplified for the final game. While the objects scattered around the levels may appear basic, the design process was intensive. There needed to be hundreds of objects per level so that collecting them wasn't boring, and there had to be as few polygons on screen as possible to avoid overwhelming the PlayStation 2. It took around 8 months before the team were sure that the growth mechanic would work as intended. They were relieved when they could show the Katamari growing from 1 meter to 500 meters in a single, seamless sequence. The Katamari was once planned to be completely destructible, but this idea was held back by technical limitations. Objects have to be absorbed into the Katamari to save memory, so only the top layer can fall off in the final game. Sound director Yumiake noted down melodies by recording himself humming. His co-workers often teased him when he did this in public, so he would record in private. The game's title theme was originally a joke included for a test version, but the team ended up liking it so much that they decided to keep it for the final product. Miyake wanted the music to stick in people's heads, almost like a curse. The series' comedic story resulted from Takahashi's observations about fantasy settings. In games like RPGs, characters often die and come back to life. There's also villains that must be destroyed in order to save the world. Takahashi felt that these tropes had become boring, so he created a game with a more humorous setup and without a villain. The game's peaceful themes were developed in response to political statements that games were too violent. With both his sculptures and Katamari, Takahashi wanted to make people happy. At the 2005 Game Developers Conference, he stated that if he could make people smile, maybe they wouldn't fight as much. Takahashi was also protective of his creation, and refused many licensing deals to keep his characters from becoming generic. He was also reluctant to work on the sequel We Love Katamari. He only consented when Namco made it clear the work would continue with or without him. We Love Katamari was also the last game in the series made with Takahashi's direct involvement. Takahashi has never played any 
many of the Katamari games that he didn't direct himself, and has been critical of Namco's decision to continue publishing sequels. He feels that a constant string of sequels showed the same lack of creativity he rebelled against with the original Katamari game. Beautiful Katamari was intended to release on the Wii, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. However, the Wii version was cancelled, due to concerns over the Wii Remote's functionality. The PlayStation 3 version was also canned, as the PS3 sales were sluggish at the time and Namco were having issues porting the game. Instead, the PlayStation 3 got Katamari Forever, which was described as a greatest hits compilation. Although you might expect him to embrace it, Takahashi has been very critical of gaming trends such as motion controls and the Wii U gamepad. In an interview with Edge, Takahashi said, Gaming hasn't been around very long, so devices like that are unnecessary. They're nothing but a diversion created for business reasons. Motion control is only fun because moving your body is fun. I'd rather people find the game itself the most fun part. Did you also know the developers of Crash Bandicoot gave the game's enemies crude names in the game's code? For more Crash Facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Crash Bandicoot. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. If you want to hear more of my voice for some reason or watch a playthrough of the first Katamari Damacy game, come over to my channel Super Mega. You can also find me on Twitter at MattHWatson. I'm done talking now. Hooray!